Hey, what's going on? Welcome to Angular Air. I'm your host, Justin Schwarzenberger. And on today's episode, we are going to be talking about Angular in the Jamstack, comma, yum, exclamation point. Should be pretty cool. Looking forward to it. Um, I don't know about this Jamstack. It'll be really interesting to, to learn about what that's all about. Uh, so let's uh, say hi to our panelists, then we'll meet our guests, and then we'll get some answers. Joining us today, we have Alyssa. Alyssa, how's it going? Hello, hello. Glad to be here. <laughs> Glad to have you as always. Mike is with us. Mike, what's going on? Uh, not too much. Just excited to hear what she has to say today. <laughs> nice, nice. I like you so good. <laughs> Very cool. And she is Tara. Tara, how's it going? It's going very well. I'm very happy to be here. We are super happy to have you. Excited. Pretty sure you've been on the show before, right? Yeah, I think the last time um, I was on for when we were talking about NGConf, the most exciting conf ever. Right, right. It's yes. probably getting close to time to talk about that again. I know. Wish yeah. I have a workshop there. Hmm. Plus, hmm. figure that out. Oh, you too. Yeah, you as well. I do. We, we have the camera layout working today. Everybody's in sync with looking looking directions. <laughs> All right. Why don't you you, uh, you want to tell our viewers a little about about yourself? What you got going on? That sort of thing. Yes. So uh, my <laughs> name. <laughs> what are you doing down there, Brocky? No. Um, so I am a uh, the Angular Developer Experience Engineer at Netlify. Um, just started that role a little bit ago. Um, I actually am, was just a really huge fan of Netlify. I had a really awesome job at Progress working with the amazing Alyssa Nichol. And uh, it had it took me a lot to like get away from that job. And Netlify was definitely one of those places where it's like the work that they do, the developer experience they have, I think it's just amazing. Um, huge fan of it. So um, I joined their team and they really wanted to have a lot more focus on Angular. Um, they understood how awesome and popular Angular is and they were like, let's have a dedicated focus on it. Um, and so that's where I came in. And so I'm excited to uh, talk to you more today about the Jamstack, um, which is kind of this new word surrounding, um, you know, bringing more dynamic things to uh, what you would usually consider a static site. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what I'm up to. Uh, there's actually a Jamstack conference in San Francisco happening right now, where we're going to be uh, announcing a lot of uh, Netlify new fun things that I have to be really careful not to let slip <laughs> before they like announce it on stage in like a few hours. So I'm going to be careful. Nice. Well, I'm gonna. I want to ask you because I'm kind of in the dark on this Netlify. Uh, what, like, what, uh, what it provides that sort of thing? Can you give us a recap of that without yeah. any spoilers, that, so you don't get in trouble? <laughs> I like immediately say all the spoilers. Like, I mean, never mind. So um, basically, Netlify helps you kind of um, modernize and make your workflow from like local to global development just uh, a lot like more seamless, uh, make it much have more uh, like modern website, continuous deployment and integration happen at the click of a button or just simply with a git push is one of the first things that really drew me to Netlify. So like with an Angular application, you basically go to their website and you can say here, log me into my GitHub. Um, this is the repo I want to connect uh, to host. And then you just say, uh, my build command is ng build prod. And, you know, my project file lives in dist jamgular. Um, and then it says, okay, it's connected. Here's, it, here's where it's hosted. Now, every time you push to your repo, it's going to redeploy your site with those new changes. Um, so that's like one of the very basic things of Netlify. But then uh, they're doing more with uh, analytics and, um, uh, have a dev environment for you as well, and just a lot of functionality to basically simplify your workflow and give you a really great developer experience for making your sites in general. I, I want to revisit part of what you said, because you said, I was a fan of Netlify, and now I work there. How does that work? Because there's some things that I'm a fan of that's just like, 
whoa, I could just make that jump from, oh, I like that too. I'm doing that. <laughs> well, so what you have to do is you have put your laptop under your pillow and then you go to sleep at night and then you have dreams about where you want to work and then they call you the next day. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So I, I have girls, I have two daughters. Yeah. So this is kind of like the tooth fairy, but it's like the job fairy. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. The money exchange is about the same amount. Like, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> what is that a money dollar. <laughs> when my daughter was young, it was about uh, about a buck. Is it has it gone up now? Oh, I don't know. My yeah, we haven't, yeah, I was gonna say our babies yeah. just got the teeth. They haven't <laughs> lost them yet. I I don't know. It's handled by the tooth fairy, dude. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Hey, can somebody book the Tooth Fairy for an Angular Air episode? Can we get that? Oh my gosh. Can Brocky, can you emulate the Tooth Fairy and dress up as the Tooth Fairy one day? <laughs> oh. <laughs> that would be the best I think that may be that to try to happen. <laughs> that would be amazing. Okay. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, it's funny because I think that. Um, there are a lot of times, like I was talking about Netlify and talks before I even worked there. Uh, and just like admiring, like I met Divya from their team from uh, that is now my coworker. And I was just like, immediately I was like, you're amazing. I really like you. And like your product is amazing. So I think, yeah, which if you if you dream it, you can achieve it. Except Flattery for height. Gets you everywhere. Height didn't, I couldn't really dream any height and make myself taller. That didn't work. I was going to ask about that because I, I had the same <laughs> dream. But that just doesn't happen. <laughs> All right. So cool. Netfly, like that. Now I got an idea of that. Very cool. All right. So this uh, jam stack. I mean, I'm familiar with like LAMP and the mean stack and the yeah. meme stack, but I haven't heard about this jam stack. What, uh, what's the deal there? So this is a new modern architecture. And so like just in the same essence that you use, that you have LAMP stack and mean stack, you're basically, uh, instead now you have JAM, it's an acronym for JavaScript, APIs and markup. The biggest thing to look at with that is before, like in the beginning of websites, <laughs> we used to basically take static sites and like, yes, <laughs> What's the Wayne's World one? Anyway, uh, <laughs> so we used to take static sites and put them on our servers and then serve out these static sites. So as, as time went on, it started to become more and more complicated uh, where you're then adding um, more logic to the servers, you're adding different functionality and it's becoming more and more complex. Uh, the Jamstack basically, it's giving you a way to simplify this huge amount of complexity that has come from how we're doing, especially front end development, um, and simplifies it and start to do uh, this like microtech, the, uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> microservice architecture. There's so many micro words now that it's starting to get ridiculous, but just stick with microservice architecture because that's like one of the best uh, things to happen to modern architecture today is basically decoupling uh, the, all these monolithic applications. And with Jamstack, you're decoupling the front end from your back end services uh, to make it even more simplified for a better development use uh, or a developer experience and a better way for your business to, uh, to uh, basically take, um, See, Brock is confusing me with his hilarious jokes. Uh, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so you're decoupling your front end from your back end so that you can have more control of what you need to focus on on the front end and then give things like um, scaling and security and uh, just that general management of all those things on the back end and you're outsourcing those complicated procedures. But I can dive in more to it. Uh, but do you have any questions so far? Yeah, I think the scaling part of that is interesting, right? I, I think about it in terms of when this, you know, if you say something with the Jamstack and it's the, your front end app and it's really standalone, you have the ability to deploy it to different environments, test it in different scenarios. The, the reduction of that 
I also need these backing services or servers to go along with it to spin up that environment um, mm -hmm. to reduce, right? And that has a story for de deployment, but also for our dev experience, like you're mentioning. Yeah. In terms of, you know, what bringing new people on to work on the code or you're just daily working on the code. What do you need to spin up to just run it and see it? Yeah. And so this is taking, so Jamstack, uh, the term kind of came because it was needed to describe all these new processes and procedures to make things more performant, like the web in general, more uh, make the performance better, <laughs> not performant. Um, so things like uh, progressive web apps and having, uh, you know, different service workers and doing things like the purple procedures, all of these new ways of approaching things can kind of start to live under this Jamstack uh, acronym because we're basically taking, so with JavaScript, we're talking about uh, using JavaScript on the dynamic parts of it. So, um, you, you know, your HTTP calls and everything that you're gonna have to do to um, get that information to your site, um, your APIs for all of the other things that you need to bring different information in. So like APIs like Stripe for e-commerce and Algolia for search, and then markup to have these pre-rendered pieces of content that can be served much faster because instead of using a web server, your Jamstack will be deployed from a CDN. Um, and a CDN is basically a you know, content delivery network and it's uh, these nodes that are globally distributed and they don't have logic like web servers do. So it's just plain and simple, you know, static content to closest to the person who's requesting it. Um, but then you also have uh, edge nodes that have redirect knowledge. So if a node fails, it knows to redirect it to um, another node. So you have, you're able to make your site even more dependable as well. And it's that concept of just same way as we think about with like images or other media that we serve from a CDN. Now we have our application code, you know, JavaScript and stuff like that in there as well. Yeah. And all the things that you mentioned. And with things like um, images um, and even other different forms of content, you can also have alternative ways to do this, like headless CMSs, which are basically holding all of your content for you, not caring what the, you know, the head part, the visual part of it is going to look like. It just has your content for you. Um, and then you also have, uh, you can have ways of storing all your images as files. So it's just linking and have, linking to that CMS holding your images. And so again, this is another thing that your users aren't taking down from your site. Um, so it's again, distributing as much as possible so that you get these plain and simple um, static, like pre-generated uh, like HTML pages or however you wanna generate them to your users. So you're really speeding up development. And in regards to Angular, are you talking then about serving out the static JavaScript files, or are you talking about pre-rendering Angular pages oh, um, and distributing that? Yeah, so that is, so you can do it both ways right now. So currently the easiest way to do an Angular site is you can just generate a new, uh, you know, engine new project from the CLI and, you know, immediately set up either with the Netlify or whoever you want to host with. I'm obviously going to talk about Netlify because it's like what I use the most. Um, but it, with that, you spin up a new project and you deploy it to, uh, to Netlify and then it's a static file. As soon as you build it, you basically have those static HTML and those JavaScript um, files. But you can also, there are two, there are a few ways that pre-rendering is coming to, that can be used with Angular. Um, and one is using Angular Universal. Uh, so you can start to make uh, pre-rendered static files. And actually, you know, uh, Uri is always ahead of the time on everything he does. <laughs> So Uri actually had a talk about this. I think it was 2017 at NGB about doing static sites with Angular. Um, and he was using Angular Universal. So that's like, he's on top of it, right? All his, like now with like what last year was all his, his brain control, which is obviously the future. Um, <laughs> so it's like, um, 
so he did a talk uh, like, what is that then, like two years ago. And so people already knew the performance attributes that we get from kind of going back to those early days of serving up static files. Um, and more and more people are requesting it for Angular. So um, there was actually talk that they're going to uh, adding pre-rendering to the Angular Universal schematic soon. Um, and just uh, doing more work with the Ivy integration to make um, Ivy handi handle building and bundling setup uh, through builders and such uh, much more proficient for pre-rendering as well. And uh, Chris, uh, I hope I don't slaughter your last name, but it's a uh, Gutenaden. Gutenaden, yes, uh, has made a uh, has made a module that you can use called Angular Pre Render that um, also is taking advantage of basically making all of these files into static HTML pages too, so that you can serve in this way. Because one of the key factors um, to jump back to Jamstack, which I mean, there's so much more that we can talk about Jamstack in general, but one of the my most favorite parts about Jamstack is you're creating um, a Git workflow. So not only are you simplifying things by um, kind of redistributing all of that backend work for security, for e-commerce, uh, for search uh, power in your website, you're also making it so that your, your developer workflow, your developer experience uh, relies on Git. So as you're pushing new code, or you can even do like serverless functions, Netlify functions, uh, Lambda functions, to uh, have hooks to also push uh, new builds via Git so that you push anything new to Git, it makes a new immutable uh, build and then that is deployed atomically. And like when I say atomically, you're basically, it takes everything and completely wipes it and then does a whole new uh, set for this new information so that nothing is mismatched. And so you know exactly what's going up there because it's all or nothing with the atomic builds. So your whole workflow is now in Git and you can it gives you a freedom to basically get this information uh, and uh, have it all new, innovate as fast and often as you want to get this information up online to your users uh, in a more reliable way since you have immutable builds and deploys that you can immediately revert back to if you need to. Like nothing's lost because you have that Git version history. One of the things I think that's cool about that, like you mentioned, is the fact that now you can look at your Git repository and essentially see what's deployed out there, right? I mean, yeah. you have to say like whatever's in this commit, is this is all the stuff that's in there that went out there because of the system that's in place, right? Versus say, I have another script that does Docker and copies things there. I mean, what if there's a, a failure over there, right? How do you have visibility that that Docker container didn't get all the files or or maybe some images were missing or that sort of thing. But here, like you're saying, it brings that back into a realm that as a developer, you have access to that to kind of see and verify right there, you know, right away that, oh yeah, okay, I'm, I'm confident all those things are there because it pulled from here. Yeah, and like how comfortable are you with Git? I mean, besides Brocky, we all know Brocky hasn't used GitHub yet, but you know. Brock, Brocky's actually a, a, a wizard with it. I know, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I just keep on copying directories. And, uh, I, I try and work on something new, I take all the code and I copy it, yeah. <laughs> it works. I, 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 I just ate the folder names, it's great, it works. <laughs> Get clone. Get push force. Get clone. Get push force. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, I like. I mean, the 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 amount that you can have conversations on. Like, so we use for our blog at Netlify, we use the Netlify CMS, um, and so it's a it's a it's a Git it's a Git CMS basically. So we're able to when we edit the blog posts, um, it creates an issue. So you create a blog post and you put your information in and uh, that makes uh, the issue. And then as you say that it's ready for review, it makes a pull request. And as you change things, it shows it as different commits coming in. And then when people uh, review it, 
it'll push and do a build of the website once everything is passing tests and we see the preview. So I can either go on the UI and make edits and move the issue along, or I can go from um, Git, uh, from GitHub and be able to work there uh, through their tooling and push the issue along that way. So it's nice for you know many teams that did, not everybody is uh, as proficient in working with those technologies. They still have the GUI that they can just look at the UI and know what they're doing there and feel confident. And then everyone else who feels stronger with GitHub can do the work there. So it's things like that that it's like, you know, not just blog friendly, but friendly, but anything, especially people like coming from WordPress that has, you know, has become more and more complex. Uh, now they still have that ease of use, but you're stripping away so much of the complexity of the technology side of it. That's great. I might have to put my laptop underneath my pillow tonight. <laughs> You get a call the next day. Like, it worked. <laughs> so the, if what we're talking about is like the automated deployment of say configured that whenever I push the master or mm -hmm. whenever somebody who's capable with Git uh, pushes the master or merges in the master, uh, that everything <laughs> automatically gets deployed. Are you then giving up some of the finer grain control? So maybe if you have something like Justin was mentioning of configuring a Docker container. Are you then giving that type of finer control up and basically saying, hey, Netlify, you handle that for us and you go ahead and you wrap that up however you need to to deploy it? Uh, so you can if that's what you prefer, but you can also, um, you're also able to have different ways where you can, uh, you know, set your different preferences for you, how, how you want the build to go. So we do give you the option. Um, and I think, I think other hosting providers do as well, give you the option to add configuration files. We are able to uh, specific, specify how you want things built and done. But, um, but the big thing is like remembering um, that it's like this main Jamstack architecture of um, building things this certain way to have it so you can have that Git flow, um, that Git workflow. And so it's kind of focusing on uh, having your the most like the template. This is kind of like PWA, the app shell kind of idea. So you're basically having the structure and this amount of content that can be served immediately that's statically generated and gives your users what they want immediately. Um, and then you are setting up, uh, you know, Netlify functions, serverless functions, webhooks. Uh, so like one of my coworkers, he has every time a tweet comes in, he has a serverless function that um, will just do it if this, then that, saying like, oh, I want these tweets showing up here that will then update his code base, which will trigger a build and that new information will come up on his site. So a lot of people think of um, this is like a static site generator, right? We're looking at static sites. But that's why Jamstack, the term Jamstack had to be created because there's like nothing static about them anymore. Nobody wants to put a pun there? No, <laughs> that's my jam, yeah. <laughs> where's, where's stickers on this video cap? Don't you have like sound buttons and stickers to like? <laughs> no, it doesn't have that sort of thing in the software that we're using. <laughs> I should have my- <laughs> I feel like I should have like my own um, like uh, carrot top kind of um, uh, trunk so that ever so often yes. I like lift up different props. <laughs> I only have a glass of water in reach. Like, <laughs> but you got rubber bands for days. So, <laughs> <laughs> now would you say that like this alleviates? 98% of performance issues if you start this using Jamstack? I would say 97.625. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, um, so the big thing that uh, a lot of people ask um, that I'll just preempt is, you know, for these huge sites that have like thousands of blog posts that they have to 
um, basically you're gonna rebuild them every time you add new content. Um, and there are different ways to go about this uh, that can make that more performant because like obviously if you have three pages that you've made into static HTML pages, they're gonna come to your users super fast because they're on a global CDN that's just like a user wants this here. You know, it's so fast. But then we had like, uh, there are a few case studies that are really interesting, but one of them in particular was Smashing. So Smashing Magazine, like not only had the whole history of all of their blog posts, or, like all their articles, but then they also had um, e-commerce for their ticket and book sales. Um, and they had job postings that you could add to their job board and everything. And at, when they first started, they basically had a WordPress site from when they originally started. And then they added more and more services to take care of all these different new things that they needed to add as they grew. So they said, all right, it's about time to switch over. And um, even, even with all of their articles, they saw switching to Jamstack made their site six times faster. So just that much more performant or that much better performance. Yeah. <laughs> um, and their load time went from 800 milliseconds to 80. That's so. awesome. Yeah, no, it, it sounds like I'm thinking of a couple of things that it doesn't cover, but it, for the most part, it sounds incredible. Is it, is there like a, hey, you're new to Jam. You've never tried it. Here's, here's the article for you. Like, I mean, you had peanut butter, but have you had Jam Stack? Um. I thought that's what we're recording right now. Oh, no. <laughs> Okay, I thought you were gonna say I, this whole time. I thought this was about jam. Um, <laughs> so there are some actually really great. So jamstack.org in general is really good because um, it gives you a like good information on like the basics of what this is. It has the best practices, um, and it also has uh, resources for like like different examples of projects. But I am. Uh, Next week, everybody's at a conference, so I'm like um, trying to work with the schedule, but uh, I will be tweeting out, um, I'm gonna make a Jamgular site uh, that will be at jamgular.com. I already bought that. Um, <laughs> okay, you gotta spell it, J-A-M. Gular, like Gular. Okay. Angular, but yeah. Jamgular. I'm with you now. <laughs> Steven Cohen is not a big fan of that just yet. <laughs> Wait, no, no, we can talk him into it. We got to We just gonna, came up with a jam I'm dealer. Make it grow on him. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, so I'll have. So that's going to be a site that is focused on Angular and the Jam Stack um, and different like. Um, and I'm also coming out with an article next week of you know what is the Jam Stack Angular edition, but uh, Jamstack.org is really great. Uh, you can also just with this uh, Jamstack architecture in mind, uh, the new dynamic.com.org, sorry, the new dynamic.org is also a really good site. Um, I'll just put these, uh, oh. Um, and uh, CSS Tricks has a thing called serverless.cssstricks.com. It's also another good resource. Um, and so just basically talking about the different um, services, the different ways to build this architecture. And uh, my manager, Sarah Drasner, did a talk about the state of the Jamstack nation at last year's Jamstack Comp. That is a really great introduction that she showcases basically um, how we came to this concept. Because when you say JavaScript, APIs, and markup, it's like, yes, we've been using that for a very long time. <laughs> Like, yes, I mean, it know. sounds like Angular. That's Angular, right? Yeah. It's like all these things that we've been using for a really long time. Like, what? What? And uh, she she talks about it in the different ways of, like, for instance, she talks about, like, the iPhone. We had phones that were, you know, had music on them, had the, had the internet. Like, that was nothing new. But the way that they packaged it, the way that they used these things together in a smarter way, uh, made it just much more appealing. Um, and so this is basically, we're taking all these things that we're very used to using um, and even kind of a structure that was how we started things in a more simple time 
and we just add these modern tools to it, structure it in a certain way that uh, just basically, I mean, it optimizes performance and it makes a better development experience, which sounds so tagline-y, but like the more I get into it, the more I'm like, it does do that. <laughs> You're like, hey, wait, remember that slogan? <laughs> So we have a question from the YouTubes uh, by Thomas. I'm going to post it or Tomas. I don't know. Um, how would you implement authorization in Jamstack? Uh, what if some user roles can't access some pages? Oh, so not a problem at all. So they actually use, uh, so you use JSW tokens. So that's the biggest thing. So you're basically having like a stateless um, authentication. Like we have Netlify identity, uh, JWT. I say JWS, JWT. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> JWS, this new thing that I'm coming up with right now. Uh, so, <laughs> so you're using a JWT and uh, you're able to basically have these different layers around every single part of your application to have this information from the JWT and your user. So you kind of have like your user header information that matches up with the JWT and you're able to do this uh, stateless identity. And so you can have your uh, user information uh, basically persist across wherever you need it to do without relying on state and relying on um, holding this information. So that's how, which I'm happy to put more information in to explain it even, uh, even further and maybe even clearer than my jumbled words. <laughs> so I have a question. So yeah. we've talked a whole lot about, hey, this is awesome. There's all these different things that you can do and speeding up performance and all that other stuff, even handling authorization. Where have you come across any scenarios where it doesn't make sense? So there are some like, you know, server, server interactions are important for a reason. Like they came into play for a reason. There are some times where there's information uh, that you have to get from your server on the fly. And that's not going to work with you know, a pre-rendered site. There's like maybe an API that doesn't exist that does that yet. That's why there are, that's why there is the ability to use Lambda functions, to use like serverless and Netlify functions, because then you can code up your own API to get this information you need. But uh, yeah, there's still cases where you have to, use a server in your application that the Jamstack isn't there yet. But I will say though, that like the ecosystem is just like growing um, like more, more and more as we go on and people start to learn more about the Jamstack. Um, and I mean, just in general, what I was saying with those huge sites, like if you're, if you're considering the fact that, you know, sites are just like, we have more, more and more data that we use every single year and sites are getting bigger and bigger. Um, you know, there does come to a point where you're having really large build times. Um, and this is again, where you have to you really be smart about how you parse things up and where we're going to have to figure out better ways to have things like, um, incremental builds. Um, and the danger in that is like, how do we do that without stepping on the progress we've made with a process like atomic deploys? So yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that makes sense that there are just some things that don't necessarily fit into this model. Yeah. So it's like, when we but you can still play with them in within this within the Jamstack, you can still interact with those types of uh, APIs or um, backends. Yeah, what I think is gonna be, what's really interesting and super, uh, like the, the big superpower of uh, the Jamstack ecosystem right now are services like, um, like Algolia for search um, and like Google Forms, you can use Google Forms so that you have static forms. Um, and you can use things, or like you can rely on Google to handle your form uh, information. Um, and things like Stripe, who have APIs, and Shopify, like has went from 
you know, being this huge application to then giving you API access so that you could use their things through an API as well. So I think that's the superpower happening is the ecosystem growing around it. Santosh has a question. So Santosh, by the way, is super awesome. He made a, uh, everybody is using uh, MG Deploy now, right? Obviously, yeah. <laughs> so Santosh just asked a question and um, I have to just shout out to him real quick because he made a Netlify builder for the NG deploy um, process so that you can uh, just hurry up and set up deploys for your Angular apps using that deploy function. Oh, but what's his question? <laughs> Are those services free or is it paid? It depends on each service. So. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, Stripe has like a free tier uh, of certain many um, things you can go through. And I believe uh, Algolia is, uh, also has a free tier. And at the tier. time, I don't know if he asked whenever we were talking about um, Netlify stuff, but do you know as far as like Netlify goes, what's oh, the, yeah. yes. So oh, Netlify has a free tier um, and they and there's like a ton that you can do so you do with the free tier it's like custom domains and https um that instant git integration continuous deployment and deploy previews uh which i really like uh just like you can do and uh like when you do like ng build prod or whatever you could do netlify deploy prod um and that will if you don't do that your default is that you get a preview um and then you have access to some of our add-ons with the free tier as well. But um, but yeah, so like with Jamstack, uh, if he was also talking about those services, you have a lot like Google Forms, obviously. I think it's like so many submissions are free as well, right? So you can have like your a pretty a pretty dynamic uh, Jamstack site for free, and then you have like very low. I mean, you don't have to worry about licensing costs. You have uh, much cheaper like hosting and scaling costs. So, I mean, again, with this dev experience, part of it is it makes things a lot simpler and not, I mean, you've seen like scaling and serverless pricing that are just like, I have no idea what you're going to charge me. I'm gonna close my eyes and hit submit, <laughs> you know? <laughs> So with a Jamstack, I mean, when I kind of started thinking about it, I'm thinking, okay, when it comes to the acronym, yeah. uh, the JavaScript API and markup, I think that like, I feel like, well, Angular is that, right? Like mm -hmm. Angular is that experience. Yeah. Um, it gets built and it gets built into a static application site ready to go when you deploy it, right? Yeah. So in terms of the, the tech stack, I feel like Angular is just like, it's there, right? To me, when I, when I read that. And then I think there's this, um, like you mentioned, these practices around the concept of working with the Jamstack. Yeah. And then that's where you start getting into things like, okay, how do we you know, manage that code from Git? Like we, we explored, you talk about there. So that's that benefit. And uh, we talk about the pre-rendering, then that's when we start thinking about, okay, I have this site, it's all ready to go in Angular, but I need to support different entry URLs, right? So you say, I went to this page versus that page. I want to pre-render those so that when somebody comes into the site, they get that right away rather than maybe having to wait until your app runs and then route, Angular routes it or whatever, right? Yeah. So yeah. some benefits there. But again, but that's something that we can do with Angular yep. with the pre-rendering. And yep. then it's a matter of like, okay, how, to me it's sense, okay, in this Jamstack, best practices would be taking that what we do in Angular already with the pre-rendering like mm -hmm. you're mentioning, and then applying this Git flow and, and this deployment to CDNs to, to pull that off. Does yes. that make sense? Yeah, exactly. And that's why I'm like, I'm really excited about it. Like we're, we don't have as like John Papa did a little snippet in his talk on the NG pump stage last year. Um, but beyond that, we're not really talking about Angular and the Jamstack that much. And I mean, the Angular development experience is fantastic, especially because the CLI. And so if we can add on top of it, like you can stay in your terminal and develop and push and deploy things. I mean, like your developer experience like gets even better, especially for those who would love to just live in the terminal forever. Um, 
<laughs> but um, aside from coming on shows like this to talk to us, I'm still in the terminal right now. <laughs> I, don't know. Hey, I don't know if you know this, but I'm streaming this from the terminal. <laughs> Exactly. You look amazing as ASCII art. Right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's basically, that's the thing that's really fantastic is that Angular can come, um, you know, be into this, like, flow into this modern architecture much easier. Like, so, you know, you can stay with the great things about Angular and then start to strip away the things that could be more of a headache, like security and servers and, um, you know, again, like authentication and such. Is so your... we can focus on our own code rather than having to worry about other people's code. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe you could finally get that side project done. <laughs> maybe. maybe. I mean, I would say it's safe to say that if we're already angularing, we're we're already jamming, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> exactly. And it's funny because um it's again like again going back to like the, the root of things, it's it's basically going back to that one one principle. Uh, focus where it's like I'm going to focus on my front end with Angular and then there are going to be teams that focus on security there's so much that we have to deal with security with you know like different rules coming in how we handle data let them have their focus on that and do that extremely well and then I just have them do that for my site you know so it's like less that you have to be an expert on, you know, for, for all those 10 X engineers, you know, now you can be like a hundred X at front end. You know? <laughs> I think that's a really good point. Uh, another thing to think about here is this offloading of, you know, the architecture of these things, like you're mentioning with the, the authentication and all these other things that we could get from these other services. It goes in that mindset of, do I build it internally and manage it? And if you're doing this Jamstack focus, you're like, well, that's not going to fly because I don't want to build a backing server, right? So I need to find solutions for that and plug and play those to, together. And so I think that that's part of that architecture mindset that you're conveying to, to get there because then it helps you build on that stack, right? And focus yeah. on that. Yeah. And I, and I feel like, I mean, there's so much that, you know, even just doing front end is so complicated as is like, so, you know, with Angular, we want to make sure that we're updating proficient with TypeScript. We want to be up to date and efficient with everything coming from TC39, from ECMAScript. Uh, we want to make sure that we're, you know, able to style things well and understand all the new things that are coming out with CSS, which in itself is just mind boggling to me. Like, there are so many things that we have to keep up to date with as developers. Why add more, like, why add you know, having to figure out security issues, having to figure out, you know, what's happening with my scaling and deployment options. Like, let's, let's make our lives a little less intense. <laughs> my side project is still using table layout and jQuery. So my, yeah, I'm well behind. I need to focus <laughs> on my front end skills there a little bit. Hey, we might come right back around too. <laughs> oh my gosh. Everything goes back to jQuery. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I mean, we were just talking about the other day how it's like there's so much cyclical stuff of like, you know, uh, it's like, oh, first you have uh, HTML. Let's make HTML uh, easier to style so we have CSS. And then now we're going to add JavaScript so we have more like functionality. And then, okay, let's separate them out. Okay, but now we have you know, everything back in one file, we have, you know, CSS and JS and like everything is commingling. Like we just, I feel like this going down this path again, where it's like, you know, where all these different things become into one thing and now we're starting to spread them out again and go back to kind of a modular microservice mindset so that we can sort things out again and have more control by letting go of some things. Sounds like you're calling just developers as a whole fickle. 
What? <laughs> huh? so I think we need like a we need like a developer history courses, right? Your class, right? That that everybody can kind of take and learn the history of the stuff, the stuff that you just walk through, right? Like what I, I'm wondering if if everybody kind of learned that information of what happened in the past, would we not be letting time go and then reinventing stuff we already have, yeah. right? Like would I, it help us have context to, to solve better going forward? I would like to uh, have a call to action for any one of your listeners to, I don't, I don't know how public the theme is to ng-conf yet. So when everybody knows about the ng-conf theme, keep this in mind and somebody submit something about the develop, like history of developers. Just Has it not been announced? I thought I, it was announced. I don't think so. I don't know. Have yeah, you I'm going to not show? announce it then. <laughs> <laughs> have you I, all talked about it on the show at all yet? I hope not. <laughs> I'm like going back over everything I've ever said now. Thanks, Tara. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but yeah, everybody, also everybody just come to NGCOMP this year because I love NGCOMP so much. Um, hey, what's biased, your but... what's your workshop? So what my workshop say? is uh, what? Let me. <laughs> I gave them so many different titles to choose from because you know me and puns. I like them. Uh, so because uh, I was like, we be jamming. Can it be we be jamming? <laughs> and then I was like, maybe I should be more descriptive. Uh, the theme will be we be jamming, though. Believe me, I will be playing a lot of jam focused music. But it's Jamstack from I don't know to pro. Wait. Um... Jam focused music, as in there will be like the delicacy of jam in the song, or oh, no. jams as in I songs. May, I may have jam snacks. <laughs> I may have snacks. I may have music that talks about jamming in it, and I may jam you all into one room. <laughs> oh, excellent! Excellent. There's so many ways you can go with that. I mean, is Space Jam Two going to be out by then? Oh my Maybe. gosh. That would be amazing, but it's like the the if only we that would have come out during the space theme and Gcomp when I was doing jam stack stuff, it would have just like aligned. It but, would uh, have a space jams uh gif as part of our talk, myself and John Nidzwicky. We had a space, oh, that's right, you did. I actually remember because it was, I feel like it was the one where, yeah. Well, you know, if, if there's this history course of development that comes up for web development, the Space Jam website needs to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. I that still is up and live, right? Even though yeah. it was like eons ago. And it's so good. You know, I think it's the curse of humanity to keep making our past mistakes. Okay. I talk about this far too much that I've probably told you this in some sober or not so sober state at least a few times to each of you. But... We used to build our houses so that we took advantage of the way the sun moved in the sky so that it would shine into the bedroom when we woke up and then it would, you know, shine into, um, you know, the living room in the evening so we could take advantage of sunlight. And then we started just facing our houses towards a street. Like, it's so dumb. It's so dumb. And so then now, again, people are like, oh, well, how, how do I take advantage of the sun so that our heating bill and our cooling bill isn't so high? And it's like, probably build your houses like you did in like, <laughs> yeah. so I feel I'm like envisioning if, viral driveways. If every other like, like, like industry can't get it right, then why would developers? I don't know. I don't yeah. see much hope. I feel like we're forever going to be Oh, listen, there's always hope. There's <laughs> always hope. I mean, we were, well, it was like started with functional programming and they're like, look at this object oriented stuff. And they're like back to functional programming. You know, it's just like all the time, all the time, whatever. We're, we're, the, we're right though. We're right. <laughs> this <laughs> this exact moment. weren't functional. <laughs> What'd you say? Is that because objects weren't functional? Bad pun. Bad. I'm not. Bad joke. Oh, no. Moving on. Oh, no. wah, wah. <laughs> John wants to know if jars of jam will be handed out at the workshop. Stop ruining my surprises, John. <laughs> <laughs> what am I supposed to do now? Just say the jam is a surprise? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, you don't know what flavor it's going to be. So That's so true. You don't know what flavor and Justin, you are so hardcore muted. <laughs> You I know. Well, I'm. I'm not. I'm talking to myself. Sorry. Okay. I'm, I'm entertaining myself while I'm responding to you. So yeah, I can't try to read your lips. Still, but... And I'm like, wait, why? Why don't I just tell him that I can't hear him? Well, I like the idea of hardcore muted too. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> I think also that um, your your workshop's going to have to be regulated. That if you accidentally pass out jelly, oh, oh instead yeah, instead of jam, oh, yep. I literally am just gonna show up with like a stack of toast. <laughs> or, or worse, preserves. Oh. Oh man, that's tough because preserves are good. I don't, but damn, it's gonna be. I jam. honestly don't know the difference. I also don't know if I can say that word. Preserves. Doesn't one come in a mason jar yeah. and the other one comes in a squeeze bottle? Isn't that the difference? <laughs> What? No, squeeze bottle, I'm no. There's no jelly. squeeze bottles. No, I think it's like squeeze bottles, jelly, and jam comes in like mason jar. Okay, right? okay. But what about preserve? Where is preserve on this spectrum? Oh, I think it's the end of the show. Are we wrapping up? <laughs> <laughs> just, the screen just goes black. I can't hear you. Know, what? That's you our stream for tonight. Movie. The difference is between jams, jellies, and preserves. I just don't know why the chat them. isn't alleviating us with the answers to this. Come yeah. on, chat. <laughs> well, I know why. It's got to be JAM because that's the acronym, right? A jelly and who wants to make an acronym out of preserves? I mean. Exactly. Oh, my God. <laughs> is there enough tech? Persistent, persistent, responsive. What other, like, buzzwords? You went fancy. I was like PHP, Ruby, you know, like, let's get weird with it. <laughs> Encapsulated. <laughs> He is encapsulation. Uh, no, my favorite is when they do acronyms of acronyms. So, like, you know, like the P is PHP and PHP is an acronym. Like, I love that. That an makes me so happy. Mm -hmm. I don't know yeah. about that. That just makes my brain twinge. Oh, all I, right. All right. Well, we so are at the top of the hour. Today, Tara. You are just freaking a ray of sunshine. <laughs> and I'm so happy for your new job. It sounds like a perfect fit. And all this new content that you're coming out with, whether it's like the website or the workshop or talks you're doing, I'm just so pumped for all of it. So. I'm excited because it means that I still get to hang out with all of you. That's all I really care about. For sure. For sure. <laughs> all right. Do we, uh, anybody have any picks? You want to plug anything or anything? Mention anything? Raise your hand. I'll call on you. All right. <laughs> We usually save our guests for last to like have the thunder. Okay, okay, make make this make this. Yeah, one. let's make them go. Yeah, okay, Mike. Oh, can we high five? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right, I do have a pick. Um, because you mentioned uh, NG Conf and workshops. Um, I will be doing a workshop with uh, somebody you guys may know, Aaron Frost. Who the heck is that? Oh, Frosty. You might know him by Frosty. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he and I are going to be doing a workshop on observables. Oh, cool. We don't have a cool title, but so I think we might have to uh, discuss that. But yeah, we'll be uh, talking about RxJS and observables. At, Call it ogling at observables. Hang on, hang on, hang on. You're, ob doing, observable. you're doing a talk. No. Workshop. 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 With the organizer of ng-conf and you don't know the theme <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> i love it sorry keep going only keep some going. windows open some of them stay closed <laughs> you're beautiful mike you're beautiful <laughs> exciting uh, ogling observables there you go nice Melissa, do you have a pick anything nothing that's all right i don't either all right, guest time. Yay! So I just want to say, because I'm really excited about all these new announcements, we do have brand new docs at Netlify. Um, you know how important docs are. We all do. They're very hard to do right. And so we like new and improved our docs. We're super excited about that. And stay uh, tuned to our Twitter for some announcements today that I've already like pre-populated the tweet and I'm just waiting for them to come out. So uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, pay attention to that. And also um, remember to visit your local museums.
that's my pick. That's a good pick. I like that. <laughs> According to the chat on YouTube's right now, I am the theme. <gasps> what? Who told him? Nobody was supposed to tell him. That's Who said Brad, you says. ruined Brad the surprise. That I am the theme. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Are you sure it's not like microphones are the theme? Like <laughs> no, it's M I K E. Microphone is M I C. <laughs> All right. I believe so. <laughs> hey, Darren, thanks a ton for sharing your time coming on and enlightening us on this jam stack as well as the Netlify stuff. I do appreciate you sharing your time. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I almost turned <laughs> the wrong way. <laughs> Wait, yeah, that's the wall. Three. Oh, boom. All right. Team, All right. team thanks, out. Darren. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right, everyone. Have a good one. Uh, we'll catch you next time. Bye. See ya.